Hi there, I'm Sheer, your AEC Tech Girl, and today we are going to learn how to become the master of data in Dynamo. Now, this is a part two of my Getting Started with Dynamo for Revit series, and we are going on a journey through working with data. If you missed the first episode, don't worry, I'll put the link to it somewhere over there. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. All right, let's get started. So you may be wondering, what is data? Well, data is simply just the stuff of programs. It travels through those stringy wires, supplying our powerful nodes with inputs where it gets processed into a new form of output. Data can be broken down into two variables, qualitative and quantitative. I know those are pretty big words, but basically it means that it's either a number or a text. For quantitative data, we have integers, which are whole numbers, and doubles, which are numbers with decimals. For qualitative data, we have strings, which are just text, booleans, which are basically true and false, and variables. Variables can be anything. It's just generic data, which could be a number or a text. But there is a spooky value that lurks around, which is a null. Ah, you must beware of nulls. Nulls represent the absence of data. A data ghost, one might say. So if you perform an action that doesn't create a valid result, the node will return a null. And it is good practice to test for nulls and remove nulls from your Dynamo graph. Let's talk strings, as you will hear this word a lot. Formally, a string is a sequence of characters representing some type of variable. Informally, it is just programming lingo for text. Let's start by playing around with some strings. It is the first type of data that we will explore in this episode. Strings can be used for a wide range of applications, including defining custom parameters, annotating documentation sets, and parsing through text-based data sets. Anything can be represented as a string. Even if you type a number into a string node, it will read it as text. Now, I just want to make a quick note before we begin that I am in the latest version of Dynamo that comes with Revit 2025, which is Dynamo 3.0.3. All right, are you ready to play some notes? Within our Dynamo library, we will navigate to input, then expand basic. This is where we find our string node. Simply click on string and it will add it into your workspace. Then feel free to type whatever you want. Let's write out some sentences and make sure you include punctuation as we will parse it out later. All right, now that we wrote out a few sentences, let's use a watch node to view our string. The watch node is under display. Then watch, select it to place it on your canvas. You ready to connect these nodes? Now go ahead and connect the output node from your string into the input node of the watch. Note that a new feature in Dynamo 3.0.3 that comes with Revit 2025 has added functionality for watch nodes to change the size of the node. So if you can't read everything and you don't wanna to scroll to the left and to the right, you can just simply change the size of that watch node now. It's pretty exciting. Next, we are going to modify this information into individual sentences. Therefore, we will parse it out at every period. We will need two things here, another string node. This time, I'm going to get the string node without going through the library by right-clicking on my canvas and typing the name of the node. Here, I will type my separator, which is a period. You might be wondering why I don't just take the easy route with getting these nodes every time by right-clicking in the workspace. And honestly, I normally do. But when teaching, I want to show you where it is in the library because this will help you understand the type of node it is, what it is used for, if it's an action or a query, etc. Speaking of action nodes, next we will need our action node to separate this string. Since we want to perform an action on a string, we will go to the string library. Then because we want to modify this string, we will select modify. Within the action group, we will select the split node. All right, now let's put all this together. See how we generate some inputs, ran an action, and produced an output just from a simple sentence. Congrats. 
You just created your first dynamo graph. All right, we've conquered strings. Let's take things up a notch and use dynamo to do some math. In Dynamo, mathematic operations are performed by arithmetic operations. Operators are a set of components that use algebraic functions with two numeric input values, which results in one output value. In other words, we are talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. Just like we did with the strings, let's start off by finding and placing some number nodes. In our input library under basic, same place as our string node, we have a variety of options for numbers. We've got our number node, a number slider, and an integer slider. With the number, you can type whatever number you like. I'm going to put three because that's just my favorite number. With the number slider, you essentially are specifying a range and then can use the slider to select a value between that range. Simply use this arrow to specify those settings. You have the min, the max, and step. Same with the integer slider, except it's only for integers. Now that we have our numbers or our inputs, let's go find some functions to play with. We will go to the math library and let's keep it simple with some operators. This is where your basic add, subtract, multiply, etc. are. Let's grab an addition and subtraction. Let's also grab a couple watch nodes, and this time we will use the quick option by right clicking on the canvas, since we already know where they are in the library. Another trick is if you want to copy a node, you can simply hold down the control key on your keyboard and drag the node that you want to copy, and it will duplicate it. Let's connect these bad boys. Now go ahead and play with those number sliders to see how the output changes. Nice work! Who knew math could be so fun? Actually, I did. I knew math could be fun. Next, we will tackle code blocks. Code blocks are a window into design script, the programming language at the heart of Dynamo. But don't let that scare you. We will take small steps to show you how easily it is to use code blocks. For example, the nodes that we just used, the string and the numbers, can be automatically converted to text syntax to aid in learning design script. This is done using a process called node to code, which is kind of fun to say. Code blocks are a text scripting interface within a visual scripting environment. They can be used as numbers, strings, formulas, and other data types. Let's dive in and make our numbers and strings and formulas as code blocks. Under script, then editor is where you will find your code block. Alternatively, if you just double click in the canvas, it will also produce a code block node. That's kind of why it's sometimes just easier to use a code block for me. Let's start off just creating a string. The first thing to know is that for design script to understand a string is a string, it needs to be placed between quotation marks. And I also need to end each expression with a semicolon. Once I write it correctly, my warning is gone. With numbers, we can just write them as is, but remember to end it with a semicolon. Now, just creating strings or numbers isn't necessarily easier with code blocks, but once we add more complexities, you will see how sometimes it saves time to use a code block. Let's now write an equation similar to what we have above. We can use x, y as our inputs, and it will create inputs for us that we can just add our previous nodes into and see how it works. But instead of using inputs, we can simply just put the values in. So now to write the equation rather than needing three different nodes, we can just do it all in one node, the code block node. We will come back to code blocks, but another input node that is used often are Booleans. Booleans are basically true or false, and we tend to use them to determine conditional logic, like if statements. You know, like if my dog is here, I'm distracted. And if not, I will get all my work done. <laughs> Let's go get that Boolean node. Back to our inputs, basic, and there it is at the very top. This node just lets you toggle between true and false. Now let's also grab a string node and a code block. 
Type whatever you want your true value to be in the string node. And then for the code block, let's actually do something a bit more complex. I will show you how to actually call another node within the code block, like a value for pi, mainly because I'm really craving some pi. Well, let's first find that node in our library. Let's go to math and function. And towards the bottom, we have pi. You will notice at the top of the pi node is the name of the node. We can actually type that into our code block to get the same results. Now let's grab our if statement node. That will be under script and control flow. Let's connect all our wires together. Then you can toggle the Boolean node from true to false and see how the output changes. Again, let's look at how we can use a code block to get the same results. If you have ever written formulas in Revit families, it's similar, but with a slightly different format. Now let's try again, but without the other inputs for the Y and the Z. And there you go. We are building more and more complexity. Another data type, which is probably a lot more appealing to most designers is color. Color is a great data type for creating compelling visuals, as well as for rendering differences in the output from your visual program. Colors in Dynamo are created using ARGB inputs. This corresponds with alpha, red, green, and blue channels. The alpha represents the transparency of the color. We can also use the HSB color space. This corresponds with hue, saturation, and brightness channels. Let's grab those inputs by going to display and color. In this example, let's work backwards. We know we want to create a color by ARGB, so let's grab that node first. Let's grab our watch node, and now we will work backwards so that we can specify those values. We'll need the alpha, blue, green, and red nodes. Don't worry about the warnings just yet. We will fix it in a moment because we need to specify those colors. Let's grab the color palette node and copy it four times. Remember, just use control. For red, we will pick a red tone. For green, a green tone. For blue, a blue tone. And for alpha, a gray tone. Now that those are set, you can see our warning is gone and our color is created. But let's take a step further and create a color range just so we can see that color. Let's connect our color to our color input and look at what we need for our other inputs. We will need two other inputs. When we hover over indices, it will let us know what we need. It says we need a list of values between zero and one. You know what would be perfect for that? A number slider. Let's grab that and edit it so we have a min of zero and a max of one. We can use the same thing for the value input, so we can copy this number slider. Remember, just use control on your keyboard and drag a node you want to copy. Since we are only using one color, the input for the indices and values won't matter. Go ahead and play around with changing the colors in the color palettes to see how they are modified. All right, Dynamo darlings, that's a wrap for today's episode. We dove deep into mastering data in Dynamo, exploring everything from understanding data types to performing math functions, using code blocks, and even adding color to our visualizations. If you found this episode helpful on your journey to mastering Dynamo, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any future episodes in this series. I'd also love it if you could share it. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible.